everybody, you're watching Cole the Corn Star. If you're even slightly interested in farming or just want to watch a 22 year old farmer get some stuff done, you're in the right place. And don't forget, if you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. Let's see what's going on in the shop. All right, I don't know where anyone's at. Hello? Looks like mom must have got a flat tire. I guess since no one's in here, I'm just gonna get started on the projects that I know I can do by myself, and we'll see if anyone shows up. I honestly have no idea where anyone's at right now. So far, I have the front end of the Freightliner greased, but I need to grease the back end yet and the back of the trailer. Pro tip when it comes to greasing, use rubber gloves. It seems like lately, everyone in the world's been wanting me to get an electric grease gun. Well, fun fact, we have one. Sometimes I just like to use the old school one. Oh, hey dad, there you are. Doing some waxing. John Deere hasn't been waxed since the beginning of harvest, so we thought we better get her waxed up good. Dad, for everyone who's unfamiliar with waxing, why do you wax the tractors? Well, if you keep them waxed, it keeps the paint really slippery, and then dust and dirt and stuff washes it off them easier, but then it keeps the nice shiny color of the color of the paint so it don't get I don't know if we call it oxidite or whatever from the sun. Yeah, not only does it make the paint look better, it also acts as a protectant, so that way it stays gleaming for a long time. And I tell you another big one. It seems like when you keep the tractors looking clean and pretty, it seems like a guy takes better care of them than like an old rusty car or something. You don't really care so much for them, you don't worry about them, but when it's a shiny object and clean, it just actually makes you take better care of it, in my eyes. This owner here is a two owner tractor. We're the second owners. The first owner took extremely good care of it and we've been keeping up on it as well. You'd never guess this tractor is 40 years old, but it is. Well, to answer your question, a few been asking, thought we were going to sell the uh, 4840 John Deere tractor. We kind of talked about that, and the other day, me and the boys talked it over. I kind of like the little girl. My dad, that was kind of one of the tractors he liked driving and stuff, so I don't know. We decided we're going to keep it and put it on our 16-row planter, and maybe early off in the game of spring, maybe plant some beans early with the John Deere and stuff, so. And if Cooper is running the kitchen, making hay and stuff he may need some help out in the field at times doing some stuff so I think we'll just keep her shined up and if we need her she's here the tractor itself is nice and shiny but the exhaust is showing a little bit of I gotta run my finger the right way it's backwards we are gonna pull the exhaust off of it and we're gonna paint it a nice black so it makes the tractor even look better so thank you for the comments on that people I just love reading the comments Sometimes we'll see something as like, oh, why did I not think of that? Or some of the advice just makes us, we can do that, make things easier. So we really appreciate all the comments. All the comments are great. When I say I'm gonna grease something, I kind of take it for granted that everyone knows what greasing is, but I should probably explain it for those of you who don't know. And if you do know what greasing is, I might teach you a thing or two. So stay watching. This is a grease gun, and this is an electric grease gun. So depending on the application, I'm either gonna use this one or the electric one. And what I do with this is we put grease in this cylinder here, and then on equipment where there's areas where metal is touching metal, often in a case like this where a shaft's going through and something's revolving around it, there's gonna be a spot that has what's called a grease zerk. So a grease zerk kind of looks like a little nipple, and we put the grease gun on that and then we pump grease into there. So what that grease is gonna do is make a smooth barrier between two places that have metal to metal contact. Every single piece of equipment here in the shop has tens if not hundreds of grease zerks all over them. There's some grease zerks that we have to grease daily and there's some grease zerks that we have to grease every 500 hours. Take the combine for example. There's a little chart here on the side of the machine that shows where all the different grease zerks are located and then it has an hour indicator beside each of them to show how many hours you're supposed 
supposed to go before you grease them. So everything in this chart here is on this side of the machine. Then there's one on the other side of the machine and on the top of the machine. We want to be keeping up on our greasing maintenance. Otherwise, if you don't keep up on it, stuff gets dry. And then when stuff gets dry, then we have metal on metal contact. And what happens when we have metal on metal contact? Wears it out. That's correct. It wears it out faster. And when stuff wears out, that means we have to replace it. Meaning that gets expensive. So in the case of today, when I say I'm greasing the semi, I start here at the front end and then I'm looking for all these little spots where I think there could possibly be a greaser. Can I feel around with my fingers? So I find them and then I put grease into them. And I work my way from the front to the back. So by the time it's all said and done, I probably cover 30 grease cirques by the time I do the entire semi. And then occasionally we run into issues with grease cirques. So sometimes when we go to put grease on them, grease just shoots right out the side instead of actually going into the area we're trying to get it into. When it does that, nine times out of 10, it's because either the grease cirque is war, so it's not sealing correctly over the grease gun, or the little plunger thing in the middle is stuck. So if a grease zerk is wore down, you gotta take it out and you put a new one in and then problem solved. If a grease zerk is stuck, you got a couple different options. See that little dot thing there in the middle? That's the plunger. So one thing we can do is take the grease zerk out and then bring it over to some sort of penetrating solution that we can soak it in that'll help break up some gunk around that. That's the last thing I'm gonna do. The first thing I would do if I had a stuck grease zerk is get a little sharp tool kind of like this. Take the grease zerk and the little sharp tool and I'd plug that right into the end and I'd shove it in there to see if I could break that little plunger free. But sometimes that just doesn't work. So what my favorite thing to do is get one of these bad boys or a lighter or anything that produces an open flame. I just point out the grease cert, turn it on, and I heat it up till it's red hot. And most times that fixes the problem. And sometimes you gotta heat it up and then use a sharp little pick and push in there to break that plunger free. Sometimes you gotta do a couple rounds of that if it's really stuck. And if that doesn't work, just take a grease cirque out, make sure that the hole inside is clean, use the pick in there to get all the gunk out, take a torch, stick it in the hole, Heat it up inside of there so that way all that gunk and stuff can be broken up a little bit and the metal can expand. Get a new grease cirque, stick it in, try putting grease in it, and then it should work. And if that doesn't work, I don't know what to tell you because I haven't figured that one out yet. There you guys go. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson of Greasing 101. We are working on the 4840 John Deere tractor servicing it since it's been uh, running around the dust there in the big machine hauling corn and stuff in and out. Corn dust sucks into the filters faster than probably any other dust. So right now, trying to take out the old filters, took the cover off of the filter. It's kind of dirty inside. So we're gonna take it over to the sink, give it a good bath before we put her back together so everything's squeaky clean. What you doing now, Dad? I just put a new, I've changed an engine oil. So I just put a new oil filter on and now I gotta fill the tractor with air, or not air, oil. Put a new inner and outer air filter in here. The old one, I don't know if you can see this on the video. She's getting a little from the harvest, running the grain carts and stuff, that dust just floats. Could probably blow it out, but corn dust is so fine. I just always worry about it sneaking through some do blow them out. You could probably do that two or three times. We did blow this one out during harvest once. I never really like to blow them out more than once. And it's time to change it, put a new one on. And then when we're out planting, we'll be in good shape. But that little dust, you can see how fine it is. It's just, it's really fine. Time to change her. Hey dad, I like that hat. Where can I get a hold of one? Which one do I get on? Calmer, calmer, corn head. Good people to work with and they'll take care of you. So for your corn head and stuff, contact them. A lot of people have been asking where they can get a hold of Daddy Cornstar's hat because they think it's our merch. That is not our merch, but we are working on some stuff and we will have merch out very soon. Just be patient with us, please, very soon. I'm putting the date when we change the uh, filter and then I'll put the hours on there too. We don't like to go over 140, 150 hours on the oil, then we'll change it again. So if it's all right here, when we're walking by the track, we always see it. Greasing definitely extends the life of metal on metal components, but it's not an end-all cure-all because stuff still does go out when you grease it. We'll take this bearing right here for example. See how it's wiggling around? It's not supposed to do that. That needs replaced.
Well, now that we got these bearings off the traps here, we gotta figure out how to take this apart. We need to get this bearing off, and right now it's kinda stuck in between here. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing here. I'm just kinda going with the flow. We're kinda thinking that this entire thing is shot because these U-joints here are bad. That shouldn't be wiggling like that. And then these little grooves here are pretty wore down. So we're kind of thinking it may be a better option just to replace this entire assembly and then just keeping our gearbox unless a new gearbox comes with it. I don't know. We have to look into this. So we got to do a little head scratching on this yet. We won't get this done tonight, but as soon as we get it figured out, we'll know. And the reason why we're even messing with these in the first place is because these bearings are what's bad here. This one may not particularly be bad, but this one here I can't get to spin at all. And what these bearings do is make it so we can open and close the doors on the semi. And so when the bearings are bad, it makes it really hard to open the doors. And it may or may not be getting to the point when we bring our semis to the local co-op, they won't open our semis for us because they open too hard. You didn't hear that from me though. Wax up here. Dad, why don't you use the power buffer? I am a power buffer. So in the meantime, until we get this figured out, I know I need to get the gearbox off of this shaft. So I'm gonna take the old grinder to this for a little bit and see if I can get this off. Hey, 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 there we go. Not a problem for a big time mechanic like myself. We'll clean up our tools and see what else we can tear into. So calls are on the combine this fall and bent <coughs> shaft on these gearboxes. So it took the gearbox cover off here, which is leaking, as you can tell, and cold and clean it up. So now I'm fixing his mistakes. But taking this off, gotta take this gear off, then we gotta pull the shaft out so then we can put a new shaft in that gearbox to have a straight one. And then we'll put a new seal on this so it's not leaking on our shop floor, like usual, like everything else. And then when it comes to the inside of the Freightliner here, we got an air leak somewhere here in the dash. We're kind of diagnosing what that is, but I'm gonna go to a place tomorrow that specializes in this stuff. And I'm gonna see if we can figure out what's going on here and what parts I need. We got up bright and early this morning and we've got literally nothing done when it comes to work. And that's because I've been running around picking up parts. I went an hour that way and from that way I had to go an hour and a half that way. Here in the back of the trusted minivan we got all the bearings and stuff. What was on the trailer and I got all the new stuff here. So now I got to figure out how to get all this stuff off and put this new stuff on. So here's what we need to do. Right here where these U-joints are they were welded on at some point. So I need to grind these welds off so that way I can get these U-joints off. So that way we can stick the new one on right there. And then once I get these off these shafts will be exposed and I can open this up. I can pull that bearing off and then we can pull this bearing off slap the new ones on and then we might have to do a little bit of fabricating on this end in order to get it back onto this that way we'll be able to put our crank on this and then open the trailer like i said i've never done one of these before but we're gonna figure it out all right grinder it looks like i've been replaced by cooper well while he's working on that i might as well get started on the gearbox on this corn head i have to take these bolts off to pull this off but this plate is separate than this plate and then i'm guessing that probably hooks into the gearbox there but i have to take this side apart because then this plate goes to here and that will have to come off well there we have it we've got our work cut out for us never done this before either and neither has dad I was under there, I was thinking, how in the world did cavemen get nuts off of bolts before they had wrenches? They must have strong fingers. In case you're wondering, no, that wasn't comfortable. Oh, I forgot two bolts. I gotta climb under the corn head again. Also, whoever designed the bottom of a case 2208 corn head, you have a warped sense of humor. And also, why does it seem like every time you drop something, you drop it right in a puddle of oil? It's a struggle today. Also a fun fact, 
Whenever you drop a bolt when you're working on something, it always falls in the place that is the most impossible place that it could ever go to every single time. It's the eighth wonder of the world. Well, there we go. Two hours later, we finally got the row unit off. I'll show you what I mean by this shaft being bent. Keep your eyes right here. See how that moves back and forth? It's not supposed to do that. Look at that one compared to it. So now we gotta get all this pulled out of here and then we'll flip this over, open up the backside, pull the shaft out, stick a new one in there, slap it back together, fill it full of grease again, put the saw back in here and then put everything back on that we just took off. By the way, these are the calmer choppers. Just look at those things. They look so aggressive and mean. We absolutely love them. If you're on the fence about getting OEM rollers or calmer choppers, we would highly, highly recommend the calmer choppers. This is what they look like after running a thousand acres across them. They look pretty good. How I put these on because these blades are sharp. This old boy is awkward. Ugh really awkward and heavy. And now we just gotta pop this cover off and figure out how to take that shaft out. Well, there we have it, guys. We took that cover off, pulled out that shaft on that gear, and check this out. There's a bushing that goes around the top of this shaft, and that bushing makes sure there's no clearance in this hole back here. And as we can see here, it's all broken. There's a bunch of chunks of it here on the floor. And so when it broke, it made wiggle in that hole, which must have caused this to bend. And then that's why we saw it moving when we were spinning it earlier. So we got a new one right here. We'll slap that back in, put that together, put everything else back on. And then the corn head can go to its summer vacation home. I know if I ever have to do this again, I'm going to make sure I have it flat when I do it. Because when I have it laid like this, it made it so metal could fall down inside the rest of the gearbox. I didn't expect metal chunks to be in there, so... Just a rookie move. But I think I'm gonna have to open up the other side now because I wanna make sure a chunk of metal didn't get in there. Otherwise, if there is a piece of metal in there, it will tear up the gearbox and then we'll have to pull everything out again anyway. So I might as well just make sure it's all clean while we got it out. It's a lesson learned though. Like I said, I've never done one of these before, so we all make mistakes, but I think I'm gonna call it a night. So tomorrow I can clean up this old gasket here, make sure that's nice and clean, so that way when we stick a new one on, it's got a good seal. And I'll have to clean up the gasket on this cover as well. Then we'll open up the other half of this gearbox make sure that's all cleaned out make sure there's no chunks of metal in there then we'll put the new piece back in put that back together put that back on get the rest of the corn head put back together and then we still got the trap bearings and shaft on this one and we still got half of the other one to do so once we get this stuff done corn head can go to its summer vacation home the red volvo can go to the big machine shed this trailer can go to the big machine shed and then the semi will come back here because we still have to address the air leak in the dash we're still waiting on a door shut shock for the 7140. Still haven't heard from the Haggy guy yet and Ryan should be down in a couple weeks to work on the combine. But after we get these semis done we got two more trailers that can come in and one more semi. And then once we're done with those semis we'll go get the 16 row planter bring that in here we got to go through that and then hopefully once we get that done the 24 row planter should be done at the shop. We'll bring that down here and then we have some goodies to put on that. But we'll talk more about that stuff later. I know I just had a t-shirt on and I'm gonna have a t-shirt on in the next scene but I want to say something real quick something like this can be done virtually by anyone with any skill set when it comes to mechanical stuff i am by no means an expert at all i am a complete rookie basically everything i work on here in the shop a large majority of it is the very first time i've ever done it in my life especially when it comes to anything repairs like the other day when cooper and i put the arm on that semi and like today taking apart the row unit on the corn head i've just simply never had to do them before so what i'm trying to get at here is most people are afraid to start on something because they don't know what they're doing and that's okay because oftentimes you learn best as you go take this for example here someone could tell me exactly how to take this apart and I, it just wouldn't stick with me. But if I do it myself, I'm going to learn all the little stuff as I go. And yes, I made a couple mistakes as I went along here, but I know next time, if I have to do this again, I'm gonna know exactly what I did wrong the first time, and I'm gonna improve on that the second time. Well, I'll probably still make one or two mistakes, but you get what I'm saying. And this applies to everything in our lives. We're all gonna be terrible at something that's completely new to us, and it's gonna seem extremely scary at first, 
But if you just take that step forward and keep taking that step forward, it gets easier and easier and you learn more and more. And then all of a sudden you turn around and you realize how far you've come and you realize, wow, that wasn't that hard at all. Don't be afraid to learn new stuff, guys. It's worth it. Knowledge is something that hangs with you. It is 8.15 at night, which means this is the worst part of the video, and that's the end. If you made it to this point in the video, congratulations, you're awesome. If you liked the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button. If you have any questions or just wanna say something, write it down in the comments. And you see that little button that says subscribe just below the video here? Yeah, why don't you click on that, then click on the little bell notification right beside it. That way, you'll be notified when I post new videos. I got a lot of projects going on here, and I have years and years and years and years of projects to do, so you might as well stay tuned because this is just the beginning. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.